Hey, this is Rene, welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I will show you how to reduce the spread for your custom symbols in the MetaTrader 5. So um, this is a really, really important topic, even though I know this video will not get a lot of likes um, because it's not important for a lot of people. But if you appreciate the content, um, then please, please leave a like and also write a comment so I know that at least some of you find this helpful. And what is this about? So this is um, important, actually really important, if you tr um, test with the MetaTrader 5 and if you are using external data uh, for this testing. So um, usually you do not have a lot of tick data in your MetaTrader 5 coming from the broker. That's why you can implement external data, for example, from the tick data manager, uh, which is a tool that uh, I always ex uh, already explained on the channel. So if you haven't watched the video, you should definitely watch it because you can get long-term high quality tick data using this tool. And um, in this tool, I will explain it once it is loaded here, you have access to different um, data sources and different um, brokerages or liquidity providers um, to choose from. And here you can see, for example, I can choose from Ducas copy. And this is the data that I currently use. And as you can see here, for example, I downloaded the data for Australian dollar, US dollar, and then included it into my MetaTrader 5 terminal. Again, for a complete tutorial how to do this, check out the video for this that I made on the channel. And this, what you can see here in the background, is the custom data that I included from this Australian dollar, US dollar data feed from Ducas copy. There's one major issue. And if I go here to charts properties and um, show the ask line in this chart, you can see the issue is what we can see here between the bid and the ask price and it is the so-called spread. So you can see right now between the bid and ask price I have a spread of 12 points. What does this mean? The spread is always there. You cannot get it away. And it is the difference between the bid and the ask price. The bid price is always the lower price and the ask price is always the higher price. Usually the ask price is not visible if you do not show the ask line. So only the bid price is visible in the chart. And this is also a big um, thing that people do not understand when they do manual backtesting, for example, and they just look at the chart and analyze their strategies and they do all of this based on the bid price only because the ask price is not visible. And this is such a crucial mistake because you just cannot base your analysis just on the bid price. It's completely mind-blowing how people assume this can be realistic because the ask price is always there and you always, you can always, 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 always only buy at the ask price and you will always, always, always sell on the bid price. So for example, if at this very moment I would place a sell order, it would become executed at the bid price. And if at the same moment I sell or I close the sell order, it would be closed at the ask price. So I would pay the spread and vice versa. If I would buy at the current price, I would buy at the ask price. And if I would immediately sell, it would be executed at the bid price. So you always pay the spread. And this is why it is so, so important. And wh wh why do I make this video? I just showed you that in this data that I got from tick, uh, the Tick Data Manager, this spread for Australian dollar, US dollar is kind of high. You can see it here, 12 points, for example, or on average, it's, I think, 10 points or something. But if I go back to my MetaTrader 5, and if I have a look at the actual Australian dollar, US dollar chart, and if we have a look at the bid and ask price here, we can barely see the difference between bid and ask. And if you have a look at the prices here, or also at the data window or the market watch here, where you can see the spread in the last uh, column here, you can see the real market spread it's not 10 points, it's not 12 points, it's like one point or two or three or maybe five, but it's not 10. So you can see the average spread uh, for the Ducas copy data, it's just way too big. And if I use this data and try to test my strategies, nearly all of them would fail because of this high unrealistic spread. So what you want to do is you want to have testing conditions, a testing environment, which is as close as possible to your real uh, live 
trading environment. And don't get me wrong, we don't want to decrease the spread to zero artificially, but we want to have a realistic spread. And I would suggest that you do not decrease it to like one or two points, even though your broker has this, but maybe to five points instead of 10. And this will also make a big difference already. And this is what I want to do now together with you. We will write a short script to update this custom data and to decrease this spread. So it's a more realistic spread that we can then use for our backtesting to get realistic backtesting data. So let me close this test here and let me open the IDE here, uh, which is the MetaQuotes language editor. And in this MetaQuotes language editor, what I want to do is I want to create a new script in the upper left corner. I can click on new, then I select script and I will click on next. Then I choose a name, which is update spread, for example, uh, spread YouTube. And then I click on next and or oh, finish. Here you can see a uh, skeleton for a new script. Let me delete the first lines, the comments and the properties and these comments here, and let me rearrange the brackets because that's how I like to have them arranged. So what we want to do is, a script is a really simple program. You run it, you activate it and it runs once and then it's over. So it only has one function. But what we want to do here is we want to have a, a property which is script show inputs because we want to have a input and this is um, spread factor and we want to have something like 0.5 because we want to decrease the spread by 0.5 for Australian dollar, US dollar, right? And what we want to do next is in the only function that this program has, we want to create a MQL tick um, array, which is called ticks. And we will need this array because now we will use the copy ticks range function, uh, ticks range function, where we, for the current chart symbol, which will be our custom symbol, we want to get all of the ticks and we want to store it in this ticks array that I just created. Then we will have to get, um, oh yeah, we will have to set copy ticks all because we want all of the ticks. And then we start at zero and we go to the current time. And we cannot just use the current time in seconds starting from the 1st January of 1970 because this function, as you can also read in the documentation, and I would suggest you just read the documentation here, um, for copy ticks range. Here you can see um, this, uh, these, these timestamps are always in milliseconds, starting from the 1st January of 1970. So what I have to do is I have to multiply this with 1000, like this. And this will give me all of the ticks that the MetaTrader 5 currently holds in its database for the Australian dollar, US dollar test custom symbol, which is my symbol where I um, loaded the uh, data from Dukes copy into the symbol. Again, if you have questions about this whole process, check out the video that I made for this purpose on this channel. I showed how you can get the dig data suite and how you can get data from these data feeds to your MetaTrader 5 terminal for high quality backtesting. So what I want to do now is, since I have all of the data stored in the uh, array here, and this is an array of MQL tick type, MQL tick is a structure in MetaTrader 5 programming and it holds information for one specific tick. So we get the time, the bid price, the ask price for this tick and also for example the time in milliseconds here. And this is what we want to update now. So for every single tick um, we now want to do something. So what we have to do is we have to loop through all of the ticks and for this reason we of course use a for loop. So we will just go through the whole array here and that's how we do it using a for loop and then inside of the body of the for loop what we want to do is we want to update the tick at index i and we want to update the ask price and we want to set it to ticks i bit plus because the ask price is always above the bit price and now we want to get the, um, the, 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 the current spread that um, this tick has. And then we want to multiply this with a spread factor so we can decrease it. So now the ask price for all of these ticks, for all of these multiple million ticks, for example, will be updated. And then, yeah, this is only updating the array, of course. So to update the actual ticks in the database of the MetaTrader 5, we have to use the custom 
uh, ticks replace function. This will delete the old ticks and update it with the new ticks that are now stored and updated in the ticks array. So we will have to use the custom symbol or chart symbol again. We will get the same period, so starting from zero, going all the way to time current multiplied with 1000. We want to, whoops, not 100, 1000, like we did here. And we update it with the values in this ticks array. And yeah, we want to use the whole array, so we do not need the last parameter. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole program. And yeah, you will see, if you run this program, it may take a while, it may take a minute, or if you have a lot of data, 10 or even 15 or 20 minutes, depends on your computer speed, of course. So you, if you want to keep track of the progress that the program um, is making, I would suggest that you add a, um, uh, um, uh, a, a print statement here, for example. So you can say something like working, and then you have, uh, we can, for example, print the time of the tick that we are currently working on. And after everything is finished, we can have something like uh, done, because then we know everything is done. And we can write something like, uh, wait, let me get the, the count, the ticks, the amount of ticks that we updated, because this function will return the amount of ticks that were processed. And here we want to print uh, ticks were updated, updated like this, I think. And that's it. So if we compile, we will now see the program in the MetaTrader 5. So if you go to a MetaTrader 5, to the navigator, to scripts, you will see update, spread, YouTube, or whatever the name is that you chose. So now um, we can have a look at, uh, we, then, then we can have a look at the spread that we currently currently have for our Australian dollar, US dollar uh, custom symbol. So if I request the ticks here and we go to the very first tick, for example, we can see the difference between bid and ask here is 41. 41. This is the spread, spread for this tick. So what happens if we run a program? So let me open a chart for this custom symbol. And now I want to drag and drop the update spread YouTube on the chart. But first of all, I want to um, have a look at the experts journal because this is where we will see the progress. So here I will drag and drop update spread to this custom symbol chart. Then I can say, for example, I want to decrease the spread by 50%. So I add 0 0.5 and I click on OK. And you can see the program is now running in the chart. And there's the progress that it is doing. It's just going through all the uh, all the ticks here. Yeah, wait, let me remove this again from the chart. As I see that this is not really perfect what I did here. Because now we have this print statement with every single tick. And this is not really, uh, not really clever. So what we want to do is we want to check in our code is if I can be divided by, I don't know, maybe 10,000 and has a rest of zero. And then we want to print. So we do not print with every single tick that we are processing because this will take a while. Um, we just do it for every 10,000th uh, tick. And if you want to have the fastest processing time, of course, you will just leave this uh, line out of the code. But now if we compile it again, and if I run it again, it should be way quicker. So I will run the same program again click on OK, you can see now the ticks are collected. Now we will see the update and yeah, you can see this was way quicker now because we do it 10,000 times quicker pretty much. Um, yeah, so you can see it's, it's still running in the chart here. It's still active because we did not update the ticks yet. And this is what the program is doing right now. And if it is finished, we will see the done, what we see now here and we can see uh, 16 million seven hundred seventy three thousand uh, one hundred eighty four ticks were processed and now we can check if this actually happened so let's go to the uh, symbols here again let's check the ticks again for Australian dollar US dollar test custom symbol and if we have a look at the same first tick here we can see the spread is no longer 41 but now it is 21 so it's decreased by 50%. And isn't this great? Because now we can use the same uh, custom symbol that we updated now. The spread is always half the size now. So if I do the same test here that I did before, we can see that the, spread, uh, the spread is now 
no longer 10 or 12 points big, but instead it's only half of this size. And this is so crazy important because if you test with a spread that is just way too high, you get completely unrealistic results. And what you always want to aim for is a realistic or most realistic testing environment. So it fits your live trading conditions. And yeah, let me fast forward some days because the first day in a year has a higher spread usually. And for example, on this day, let me show the uh, ask line. So we have access to the spread here. And what we can do is have a look at the spread. Um, there is the spread. And now you can see the spread. Let me pause this. It's no longer 10 or 12 points big, but it's on average. Um, on average, it's five or six, um, five or six, six points. And um, yeah, or I mean, it's not five or six points always. It's sometimes seven, eight or, or whatever. It's I mean, it, it changes always during the day, right? Here we have six points, but it's not 10 or 12 points because it's half the size now. So testing will be way more realistic. And um, yeah, this is because like, Again, if you if you have a look at the actual spread that I have here in my IC Markets account, it's, it's zero for Australian dollar, US dollar, or one or two or three. Like on average, I think it's maybe three points during the day, but it's not 10. So this is now way more realistic. And yeah, that's why you should update the spread for your custom symbol if you have a broker with a low spread, which I would, of course, always recommend. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. Do you want to watch these kind of videos? I mean, it's a little bit nerdy. It's a little bit into detail. Um, I know not a lot of people are interested in these kinds of videos. But if you appreciate it, please write a comment and always give a thumbs up to the video so I know that you, that you want to watch these videos. And I just made this because this is what I am doing right now. So when I'm not making videos and when I'm testing my own strategies, I deal with, with stuff like this in the background. And um, yeah, I just decided to share this with you because it can be beneficial for some of you guys and help you to, to, to make your own tests more realistic. So if you like this, thumbs up and thanks for watching. And yeah, have a great time. See you next time. Good trades. Bye.